Hello, I'm Courtney Holland. Welcome to the latest episode of Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. Sometimes an overnight success is years in the making, and that's the story we're telling in Lexington, Virginia. Make sure you stay to the end of the episode for details on a $5,000 giveaway that you are eligible for. Meanwhile, we check in with Cleveland, Virginia, the town we're following for a year, while your expert tip comes from a West Virginia native and Virginia Tech student who studies the region. As expected, Maxwell drones on about the number he picked out for you. As always, we close with three questions for a mayor. First, here's executive producer Andrea Brunet with your example of awesome story from Lexington, where city leaders gambled on a local developer's dreams. Lexington's charms include its history and appeal to Civil War buffs, the Shenandoah Valley being a big theater of battle, two universities, Virginia Military Institute and Washington and Lee, add intellectual and economic heft. Foodies and lovers of craft beer and wine find much to please the palate. And the ambitious Fields of Gold agritourism project that spans several counties showcases no fewer than five farm-to-table restaurants in Lexington. Five years ago, the city council found itself at a crossroads. The council, mayor, and city manager were asked to support a project involving the Robert E. Lee Building. A local businessman wanted to transform the building to become a grand hotel and restaurant. But that would require almost 40 low-income families to be moved. Plus, he wanted tax breaks and incentives amounting to almost a half a million dollars. I always look at this building as a, this is when America was American, when people, they used to put buildings that uh, from 1910 to 1930, uh, they were building, building to be proud with terrazzo floor, uh, beautiful columns, uh, uh, ornate from outside, very ornate. I mean, it is a beautiful building. And he looked like this 100 years ago. He's going to look like this another 200 years. But how much would a hotel help downtown Lexington? The issue is not without controversy. In the end, a majority of city officials believed they were losing too much money because of all the hotels located outside city limits. They decided to risk providing incentives to local developer Ugo Benincasa as he sank millions of dollars into the restoration. He maintains that he, not the city, took all the risk. We removed about two, almost $200,000 worth of asbestos. We didn't expect that. So they, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Benincasa agreed to generate at least 40 jobs, and city officials say the hotel has boosted downtown's retail trade as well. The 39-room hotel, managed by up-to-par hotel operators, was completed in 2014 and brings in tax revenues based on its assessed value of $3.4 million. Lexington now has a second newly renovated boutique hotel, the Georges, along with new downtown restaurants. Uh, we get a lot of business from uh, outside the area, uh, from different part of the country. So business is good. We're paying the bills, so we're happy with that. It's, it's the showcase of downtown Lexington. It is, uh, it's, a, it's an old historical building that was, unfortunately, was an eyesore for a downtown community. Uh, and we really have turned it and turned it right around. I mean, it's really the centerpiece. Lexington, surrounded by the Blue Ridge and Allegheny Mountains, is like living in the middle of a landscape painting, says a local artist quoted in Virginia Living Magazine. The city found a way to go beyond just appearances. They made a bet that tax incentives to a local developer would pay off, and time has proved them right. Cleveland is looking a little prettier these days. On a gloomy winter day, Andrea Brunet shows us why. It was drizzly and overcast on a recent day in Cleveland, still decorated for the holidays. But inside Town Hall, town manager Kathy Johnson's mood was spirited. Well, if you want to attract tourism, you want your downtown to be spiffed up, I mean, you know, instead of these old derelict buildings or, you know, just a little bit of paint does wonders. What got painted on the main town drag? Check out these before images of two former businesses, now vacant. Once a restaurant, this building got a facelift, new color, and awnings. And the old car wash went from this to this. 
that sign up there has to go, but once it's removed, all the facade work downtown will be done. The building's owners had to kick in a share, but the Department of Housing and Community Development paid for most of the work. Everything is done but the Grip Outdoor business, where a mural is to be painted. Morgan Gilbert's art students at Lebanon High School are creating a design to cover these blank walls. Town leaders hope the work completed under the facade grant will attract new businesses to these old buildings. Ready for takeoff? It's time for Maxwell's number. Do you know how many students in America first received degrees in drone systems operations? Of course you don't, but that number happens to be five. Five is also the average on a scale that rates drones from one to 10. At the average of five, a drone can fly independently for hundreds of yards. So why are we talking about drones and the number five? Five is also the number of counties in Southwest Virginia that's slated for drone industry development as funded through the Appalachian Regional Commission. The counties are Dickinson, Lee, Scott, Wise, and the city of Norton, and together they are part of the Virginia Emerging Drone Industry Cluster Project. Mountain Empire Community College will offer courses in drone training for out-of-work minors and students in hopes they will transition to new careers. More than 64 workers are slated to be trained within the first year. Hundreds of new drone-related jobs are projected. This drone has a burrito payload. But drones have also been used to drop medicines in rural southwest Virginia. So today our number is five, but when it comes to economic development, Drones are a 10. Your expert tip comes from Crystal Cook Marshall, a West Virginia native who's earning a doctoral degree in science and technology and society. And she has also worked in a program that involved hundreds of Appalachian research projects. Her tip involves not relying entirely on manufacturing companies to support your economy. They may come in, come in and be extremely productive, whether it's uranium, uranium mining in Danville or coal mining in Southwest Virginia or wherever. They can produce a lot, but they don't want to hire people to do it. People are a liability. We get sick. We unionize. You have to pay our insurance. You have to pay our retirement. Um, and this is not just you know, manufacturing in our region or industrial processes in our region. This is everywhere. So if you are hinterland and you're small, how, you know, your thinking has to be about what can we attract in or what can, can we create that can't be automated. You can read a transcript of the complete interview at the Save Our Town website, where Marshall outlines emerging sectors including tourism, agriculture, and the arts. Click on the Connect with Experts tab. Next, remember the drone education project Maxwell told you about? This extension geospatial specialist is also working on community college training. John McGee, who teaches in the College of Natural Resources and Environment, is one of the people bringing small unmanned aircraft training to Virginia's community college students. The National Science Foundation is funding the work. McGee joins colleagues from the Virginia Space Grant Consortium and the Virginia Community College System. McGee says that with drones changing the way industries do business, it's vital to foster a well-trained workforce. Drones can be employed to map wildlife habitat, inspect utilities, aid in precision farming, and more. Under the project, community college instructors will get help creating a curriculum to include flight planning, maintenance, and safety. For more information, go to the Save Our Towns website. You'll find McGee under the Extension tab. Now we return to Lexington to ask three questions of the mayor at the time of this interview, who decided not to run again after eight years in office. I'm Mimi Elrod. I'm the mayor of Lexington, and this is Lexington, Virginia. Fortunate, very fortunate. In a sense, we have a land challenge because we don't have any more open space, really. Every now and then you might see a lot that's open in our neighborhood, but we have, no, we have nowhere to build anything else, really, that would be industrial in nature or um, business. I mean, our, our, our business area, our central business district is fairly compact, and there's really no room to expand that. I'd like them to know that we have preserved our history, and in a good way. Our buildings, we didn't, um, you know, when a lot of other cities were tearing down their buildings and putting up new buildings, we didn't do that. So when you ride through Lexington, you're seeing a town or a city that's been, that's now like it has been for a very long time, and I think that required a lot of foresight on the part of the preservationist, and we still think about that. What is preservation? What does it mean? 
How can we accomplish that? And I think that emphasis has been almost as important as anything else. For more resources and contact information for the experts we interview, go to the Save Our Towns website. As mentioned earlier, we have a $5,000 asset to give away. We are offering you, free of charge, a chance to tell us why Virginia Tech experts should pick your town. The first three town managers or mayors who respond will be eligible to apply for a study to be carried out by the Virginia Tech Institute for Policy and Governance. The work will include a consultation and consist of a look at your governance structure, economic trends, your working relationship with nonprofits, and potential for civic engagement. It will also include recommendations for capacity building and ideas for economic development. Send your thoughts about this episode and also your request to be considered for the study to saveourtowns at vt.edu and tell us why the Institute should pick you. This is Episode 6 of Season 3. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.